Hi, it's Greg Ott with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I'd just take everybody through a, uh, for those that are interested, a little follow-up on all the different videos I've made, where those different gardening areas or gardening projects are coming, how the different experiments are coming along, and so on. So stay with me and uh, come, let's have a walk through my garden. Here's where I do my composting. These uh, one cubic yard stations are about, oh, I don't know, three, four feet high. And uh, in this one I've got, since it's sitting here for a year anyway, I decided to plant something. And this one got some potatoes. This has got uh, pumpkin as well as a ridiculous number of volunteer potatoes. <laughs> so many that. It's hard to believe they're volunteers. Anyway, they're going in with the pumpkins. I just decided to let them go. Who cares? We'll see where it goes. The, the intent with the pumpkins, there's a hill here. And the intent is to train the pumpkins up the hill. Right? Uh, more pumpkins. These are some kind of squash I got from Ukraine online. Some other kind of squash. I, I don't mark anything. I can't stand those little sticks that people put in their gardens. If you're planting three or four things, it makes sense. But, all you need to know is it's a squash, and you'll know what kind of squash it is when it appears on the vine. That's all you need to know. So, anyway, this is some sort of squash. I'll tr train that up, up the hill as well, and uh, yeah, we'll see how well that does. Here's the lettuce that I had in that uh, cut and come again. They're starting to bolt. If you don't know what bolting looks like, uh, you'll have a lettuce that looks like this one. It'll start to make a circle like this, and then the circle will start to open. And then a weird sort of different kind of growth will appear out of that circle that looks like this. And eventually some flowers will come out of the top. Anyway, once it starts to do this, you got to pick them because they don't taste. They get more and more bitter as it goes. We had something and it was okay. Um, but once it starts to take on this shape, it's really game over <laughs> in the lettuce business. All right. Um, for those that watched that video where I was... Uh, weeding the horse manure weeds where the carrots were. This is that bed now with the carrots. They're all a foot or a foot and a half, maybe even two feet high. And uh, hardly any weeds to speak of. And uh, everything's doing just fine. I got lots of beautiful carrots in there. I've been, we've been eating them regularly. You can't even tell we've been pulling them. I pull carrots every other day, you know, enough to make uh, a dish, <laughs> you know, uh, for four people. Um, no sign that I've even been eating carrots out of here. Um, uh, in that video I talked about how I uh, had forgotten to plant parsnips in the middle. You can see there's two, there's tall parsnips at the end and then the parsnips in the middle are a bit smaller. So uh, anyway, they're catching up and they're doing fine. All these tomatoes, which are about two feet high, maybe a bit more right now, were moved over from my cold frame. So these were direct seeded in early May, and it's now uh, July 18th, and um, they're doing great. They've gone to flower. They're nice and stout and solid. These are, I think, primarily Rutger, uh, Rutgers tomatoes. The ones on the end, which are shorter, are, I think they're called Starfire. Um, I don't know why they're shorter, maybe it's just the variety, but all the tomatoes that I planted that are that variety are shorter. But I think they didn't germinate as early. They were all planted at the same time, but the Rutgers germinated before the Starfire. So if you're in a cold area, go with the Rutgers. I mean, we'll, we'll see how they do. As the, this is my first year planting Rutgers, so I don't know. But uh, all indications, they look very healthy, very little blight, very happy with them. What else? This is the uh, kale salad garden. <laughs> out of control. Doing great. I'm picking greens out of this all the time and even preserving them. I think I'll do a video on how to preserve kale. Because uh, if you get more than you need, uh, you should be preserving it because nothing worse than having to buy it. Uh, you know, in December or January, February, March. Um, and it's pretty easy to preserve using the technique I use. This is uh, my uh, pickling cucumbers. 
they're a good three four feet high now uh, these were started under one of those domes that video where I built the uh, the dome uh, the plastic dome with the wire remesh um, these are way far ahead of um, other squashes like these which I just planted direct into the ground with no dome these are uh, Oh, patty pan and, and zucchini, I believe. Uh, I guess I'll see when they come up. And of course you can tell there's there's dill all over the place here. Um, I always have dill in my garden and it just tends to grow everywhere and I just let it. Uh, this dill, it's in with the um, cucumbers I planted on purpose because dill goes, I want to pickle them primarily. <laughs> we're going to have them in salads of course, but we're, we got a lot here so uh, I planted the materials for pickling in with them so it's all in one place. Also, the, the flowers of the dill, they're all, everything's flowering right now. The cucumbers are flowering, the dill's flowering. So everything attracts pollinators and gets them in there and gets that all happening. Because you want maximum pollination with your, with your cucumbers. Well, it's getting kind of foggy here. For those that watch the video with me planting the potatoes and the peas together, this is that bed now. Um, I, there's actually two different varieties of pea. This is snow peas, which I planted by mistake. I don't like snow peas. <laughs> I mean, they're off, they're fine, but I prefer uh, uh, sugar snap peas. So these shorter, bushier ones on the on this side here are um, Alaska bush peas. And they're very sweet and very good. And I'm really, really happy with them and they grew very fast. So I'll definitely be going with those next year. Anyway, the peas are just about done, in fact. Um, they, they came up quickly, they produced quickly. And just they're just starting to slow down, which is fine because my beans are just just about ready to flower. They're actually my beans are flowering. My bush beans are flowering, so I'm gonna have beans in a couple weeks, so that all works out fine. And the potatoes, which you saw me plant, doing great. Took no time to plant them at all using this system with mulch, so they're doing fine. Uh, this garden here with all the squash actually had a dome over it, and I was growing. Um, uh, uh, kohlrabi and uh, what was the other plant? Kohlrabi and uh, Brussels sprouts in here. I pulled them all out of here and moved them to another location in my garden and put these squash in because I, I wanted squash here. Um, so here are the uh, kohlrabi and the uh, Brussels sprouts that I moved. I believe these are Brussels sprouts. They could be uh, Broccoli, I, I can't remember to tell you the truth. Um, and they're very similar. I've been eating the leaves. Uh, I really like the leaves, to tell you the truth. So, uh, the same with this kohlrabi here. I, I tend to eat the leaves more than the, the kohlrabi. I, I eat the leaves a lot, which really weakens the root, which is fine, because I'm happy just to throw it away. <laughs> or just use it in a soup or something like that. I really prefer the leaves to the root. Um, so that the plants never get that impressive because I, I just keep taking the leaves. They're really good. They're analogous to um, collards, but they cook in a couple minutes as opposed to, uh, you know, a long amount of time that collard greens take. Uh, what else? Um, here's a garden where I made a quick bed. Um, these are uh, some sort of pumpkin or squash. Um, they're doing pretty good. I planted this much later than my other squashes, so of course they're behind. But we'll see how they do. Uh, they seem to be doing fine. They're growing, doubling in size every every three days. Uh, and strangely enough, there's some. You can see in between. There's a, like a kale in the middle there. That's just wild kale. I seem to have kale everywhere in my garden. I don't know why, uh, but uh, it seems to come up just about everywhere. <laughs> As I got it in my driveway, I have it here. Uh, I must have spread a lot of seeds around when I was um, l letting my kale go to seed the previous year. Um, here's the cold frames. This one has a, a kind of a bush dwarf pepper. I thought they would do well and I've had to take the, the plastic roof off. Here's the roof here right. Right. Um, because they're they're touching the roof now so the roof's got to go and it's warm anyway. It's you know, it's getting up in the high high 20s during the day July 18th and uh, you know it's not, not that cold at night. Uh, although we did have a couple 10 degree, 10 degrees Celsius nights, so just to give people f in different parts of the uh, continent or world, I guess, uh, an idea of uh, what kind of temperatures I'm dealing with here. It it gets pretty cool at night because I'm close to the ocean and I'm relatively high uh, elevation. 
But anyway, these are doing good, and they're since I've moved in this location, they're the best peppers I've grown here. So I think a, going with a bushy, dwarfed, fast-growing variety was the right choice for this climate here. Um, tomatoes that I direct seeded, these were direct seeded, right? These were direct seeded early May in the cold frame under under the plastic roof. Same with these tomatoes. You can see the whole thing's mulched with hay. Right, this one's mulched with, uh, oh, it's not necessarily hay, it's, uh, I, I did some mowing. I mowed a bunch of weeds over here with the bag on my mower, and I just threw, threw all the stuff that the mower, the mower chopped up. I threw that down as a mulch. Makes a great mulch, gets nice and warm, keeps the soil warm, which the peppers like. Anyway, these uh, tomatoes are doing great, very happy with them. And over here we've got the uh, uh, eggplant. Still under plastic. Uh, they're a real heat-loving plant, and we don't have heat here, so it's a challenge to grow eggplants. I've only ever grown them once during a phenomenal summer. Anyway, they're they're doing better than the ones I grew last year. Let's just put it that way. I know people in warmer zones are like, those are small. <laughs> but last year they we're about a quarter of this size at this time of the year, so um, definitely grow them on plastic. And they're really starting to grow quickly now, so I anticipate uh, that they should be up and touching the roof in a couple weeks. And I anticipate a harvest in the fall, hopefully before the frost comes. <laughs> uh, looking out over here, let's open this high-tech locking mechanism. Um, if anyone that watched the silly uh, Let's build a Ruth Stout garden. Um, so these are those garden beds. I try to shoot it from the angle that I made the film. I think I had the camera here when I was building the, one, the, fur, the furthest one from me here. Um, anyway, they're doing pretty good. Uh, I can't remember the exact date of when I put those in, maybe a month ago. So maybe less. Um, anyway, they're doing fine. I haven't done a thing, literally, these three beds took about, oh, I don't know, 18 minutes or something like that, 20 minutes. And uh, I just put, you know, put the hay down and walked away. So you'll notice that they're not as thick as these two beds. Now these two beds, you know, I, I got a box, a four by eight box. I leveled it out. I took a pickaxe to the ground. I broke everything up. I threw all the weeds in the forest over here. And I put my potatoes down. Everything else was the same. I, I put manure down, put the potatoes in, put the hay over, walked away. The difference is that I cultivated the soil here and here. So it seems to be a heavier yielding situation, although these were planted a month before these, so we'll see. But I anticipate this will do a little bit better. But these each, these took two hours each or more, right? I had to pay for the lumber, which is going to rot and need to be thrown away. And it was a real pain, a lot of work, right? It took a couple hours to do each one. Whereas this took no time. So even if I get half the yield from these, because they were a tenth of the work of these, um, totally worth it. And of course, these beds will be that much better uh, next year, right? Because the, uh, the soil in that area will be that much more uh, prepared and uh, and uh, just easier to work with. The, the weeds will be that much more choked out and uh, it'll just be easier to grow out here. So uh, I'm interested to see how that goes. After I harvest the potatoes here, I'm going to do what I can to chop up whatever weeds have poked through. And there is a few weeds poking through here and there. Um, but I'll put another foot or more of uh, hay down. So hopefully that'll finish off whatever weeds are Growing. I might even just hay the whole whole area because we've got ticks here and it's a it's a pain to have to mow this. I mean, it's a handy because it's a way to collect mulch, but it's not handy in the sense that if I don't mow it, mow it I could there could be ticks here and uh, anyone that lives with ticks they're they're gross. Anyway, just a quick little follow-up video for those that have been following the YouTube uh, videos and the uh, podcast or reading the column. Um, Want to follow up on some of the things I've shown you or see where things are, compare uh, results you're having to the results I'm having. Um, 
compare techniques and so on and so forth. I hope this was useful. hope that you enjoyed the content. Um, if you like this, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out my column, Growing Food with Greg in the Local Express, and until next time, get out there, get at it, and have fun in your garden. Thanks. See you next time.